everyone, Pushing of Roses here, and today I will be talking about a fantastic adventure game I recently played called The Dark Side Detective. It's been a while since I've done an adventure game review, and I must say, it felt good to sit down and play an adventure game in the first place. Even though I've evolved my channel a lot over the last few years, I still have a great fondness for these, and I'm ecstatic to tell you about this one in particular. It was developed by Spooky Doorway, a company name that really speaks to my heart, in 2017, and honestly, I cannot believe this game had been out for five years before I played it. Shame on me. I was also very pleased to see that the sequel had already been released last year, so now I'm extra excited to play that after I finish up this review. A lot of people ask me for suggestions on a good starter adventure game, like an easy entry into the genre, and to be honest, that's always a hard question for me because I don't know the specifics people are looking for, but I would say The Dark Side Detective would be a good option. It's an inventory object game, and yes, I did squee when I found out we have an inventory, where you play a detective named Frankie McQueen. McQueen is part of the Dark Side division in the city of Twin Lakes, which handles cases in the Dark Side, a parallel universe. With your doofy sidekick, Officer Dooley, you go around solving cases that deal with the occult, the paranormal, and gremlins. Pew pew, tee hee hee. Goddamn, they are cute. This is not what I would call a mystery game, at least not in terms of mechanics. To me, mystery games definitely have you solve crimes in a more methodical way. As an example, in contradiction, you interrogate people, collect clues, and then use your notes to figure out who is lying. Another good example comes from L.A. Noir, which similarly relies on you collecting evidence and using it while you interrogate people. The Dark Side Detective does a fantastic job making you feel like you are doing detective work, but I would still call it a classic adventure game in the comedy genre. Speaking of, this game is hilarious. I laughed many times during my playthrough. I think writing a comedy game is extremely difficult, and I don't think there are many that even fit that genre, aside from the majority of LucasArts games, maybe a few Sierra titles as well, but there aren't many that are just pure comedy, hitting every note with clever dialogue trees. Let's be really honest for a second. Adventure games can be boring. And if your dialogue trees aren't entertaining, if you can't write something that people won't get fatigued from reading, they're just gonna click through it. Even I do that when things get a little too long-winded, it happens. But this game does a great job of making me want to read everything on the screen and click on everything that might have a description. It's hard enough to write descriptions at all without F. Scott Fitzgeralding it up by describing every part of the room you're in, let alone writing something funny. I was very impressed by the game's sharp wit and terse descriptions, making it easy to read while getting a chuckle. I think we've definitely seen an interest in games just like this in the last decade. It reminded me of Thimbleweed Park and Unavowed as well, and trust me, that is a compliment because I also loved those titles. It probably goes without saying, but the art style is charming as well, very nostalgic looking while still having modern animations, colorful and just full of personality, even though the majority of characters don't even have facial expressions. Adding to this is the music, it's just gorgeous. If I had to compare it to something else, I'd say it has a similar tone to the music in Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father. Here's a small sample from a track I really enjoyed. There isn't voice acting, which I was very pleased with. I do like giving the characters their own personalities and voices, and speaking of, I'll give you a little sneak peek at my incredible voice acting talents. It's very special, and I think you're gonna love it. An invisible person. Welcome, sir. It's all that is to say, me and I's pleasure to welcome you to Costume Shop. So that is the name. Your broken sign wasn't very clear. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, my old fella said. And if it is broken, maybe don't fix it anyway, he'd add. Very practical man, he was. Thank you, thank you. And now I will voice a couple of nerds. Ahem. We're 100% of the Twin Lakes Cryptozoology Club. We're always on the hunt for lake monsters, sewer gators, krakens, and around winter, yetis. People don't know this, but there's a lot of strange things happening in Twin Lakes. Thank you, thank you. I am very hireable for your next adventure game. The most novel thing about this game is it is such a love letter to all things related to mystery and sci-fi. It takes some pretty obvious notes from Twin Peaks, including our coffee-loving protagonist who looks a lot like Dale Cooper, the homage to the town's name, Twin Lakes, 
and just so much more. There's also references to the X-Files, to other classic adventure games, to famous authors of fantasy and sci-fi. I went through an entire case that reminded me of the Ghostbusters. I can't even really sit here and name every reference, and I assume you wouldn't want me to because it's always so pleasant to find them on your own. It's not too blatant either, it's just familiar. Well, I mean, maybe this one is a little overt. Hate this hack of crap. The puzzles are on the easy side. I didn't get stuck during my playthrough, but even though they aren't the most challenging things I've ever seen, they're still satisfying to solve. Some people might find them too simple, but this really is meant to be a more laid back experience. I don't subscribe to the idea that every adventure game has to have similar levels of difficulty, and there are going to be people new to this genre who might not find this game as easy as someone who grew up with, say, Sierra games. Personally, I like the puzzles just fine. They felt organic, and they made sense to the settings and the story, and that matters more to me than just difficulty. But look, look, I'm gonna need to dock points for the slider puzzle and the lights out puzzle. I have at least a dozen people who signed my stop putting slider puzzles in adventure games petition, and goddammit, we're gonna make it happen. The game actually starts out pretty easy. The first case is called Malice in Wonderland, and yes, all the cases are puns, and your mission is to find a little girl who went missing. It's definitely the shortest case, but it's a lovely introduction that teaches you how to play and who the characters are. It hooked me immediately, and when I finished the game, bonus content! Had popped up. Woohoo! I finished the game in about four hours before I played the extra cases. I'm anticipating a six and a half hour run based on that. Honestly, I'm not even sure I have any nitpicks. Not that I have to have any. Gushing about something until I bore people to death is a pastime of mine. But I did expect to have at least one simple criticism. It doesn't have my beloved save slots, which I always want in a game, but I suppose I can forgive it since you can replay the cases separately once you finish them. I just love having a million save slots that I never use. I get attached to old game mechanics and I don't like it when things change. We fear change. I 100% recommend this game to anyone, but those who like things like Twin Peaks, The X-Files, and classic adventure games will especially appreciate it. It's great for an evening with a damn fine cup of coffee and a slice of cherry pie. I hope you enjoyed my review, and if you played it or plan on playing it in its sequel, let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, happy sleuthing. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video about the Dark Side Detective. I can't wait to play the sequel. If you want more gaming content from me, I have plenty on this channel. But first, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons who enable my coffee addiction by funding it every month. Thanks! If you want to support me and the channel, please consider joining, and if not, comments help my self-esteem, especially the good ones. If you want to see more from me, I have a few recommendations. On the left, I have a review of another indie adventure game called Jenny LeClue, a title I also greatly enjoyed. And on the right, I have a video from my flagship series called That Time on Murder, She Wrote. If you want to watch Angela Lansbury chew the scenery, I got you covered. Thanks again, and as always, I will see you in the next one.